Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at the monetary unit sampling, specifically the tolerable and the upper statement bound. This topic is covered on the CPA auditing exam and I'm going to show this in a form of a simulation and in an auditing course, whether it's a graduate or undergraduate courses. This topic is challenging for many students because they don't like statistics and when you combine statistics with accounting, it turns people off and often students don't learn this in college. And when they get to the CPA exam, they struggle on this topic. So hopefully through this example, I can make it easier for you. But if you want to learn more about this topic, visit my auditing course, auditing and attestation course, where you would learn the basics, because this is an exercise where you would learn the basics, the explanation of what I will be doing today. Although today I will explain what I'm doing, but if you want more knowledge, please visit my website. As always, please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, subscribe to the channel, connect with me on Instagram. If they help you, it means they might help other people share the wealth. On my website, farhatlectures.com, this is where you find additional material about my auditing course, as well as many accounting finance courses, as well as CPA exam preparation. If you're planning to add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam, check out my website. It's a great supplemental tool. So in the prior session, what we did is, and I'm going to put this, the prior session in the description because it's very important. We were asked to come to calculate the sample size for a company that had, there was auditing inventory with a population of 3,140 inventory items. The dollar value was 19,325. The tolerable misstatement was 575,000. The acceptable risk of incorrect acceptance was 10% and no misstatement was expected. So in the prior session, we computed the sample size happens to be 77. Also in the prior session, they said, assume your starting point is 123,608. Compute the cumulative dollar amount associated with the first five sample items. And that's what we did in the prior session. How will the auditor determine the physical inventory item associated with each dollar amount? So it's very important that you look at the prior session or you don't have to look at the prior session as long as you know how to compute the sample size, as long as you know how to know how to select the five items, you're good to go. But if you feel you want more confidence, please look at the prior session. Also, what's important is the 10% acceptance of, uh, uh, of an incorrect acceptance and no misstatement was expected in the population as well as the tolerable misstatement because we're going to be using this information now, which is now is what? Now is assume that a sample of 100 unit was obtained and assume, the f assume that the following three misstatements were found. So we selected rather than 77, we selected 100. It doesn't matter. So we selected more than what the sample suggested. But the point is we found three misstatements and those are the three misstatements. We had an inventory recorded value of $897.16. When we audited, we find out when we selected this item, we find out the value is $609.16. We had a $47 and two pennies of some inventory, but what we find out it doesn't exist. The audited value is zero or the value of it is zero. It might exist, but it really has no value because it's obsolescence. We had another item for 1621.68. The true value is 1521.68, the audited value. So now what they want us to do is calculate the overstatement bound and draw the conclusion whether the population is acceptable. Basically, we need to know is the population is, is acceptable as stated. So we need to figure out what's called the upper misstatement bound because we know the tolerable misstatement we can tolerate 575 and we're going to add to this something called allowance risk and if that allowance risk that risk that additional risk because we're sampling is above is above a certain number if, if, if above the 575 then we're just we're not going to go ahead we're going to say that the population is not fairly stated so to work this example it's best to work it in an excel sheet because we're going to be doing quite a few of ca computation so let's go ahead and look at the Excel sheet. Let's take a look at this Excel sheet. And basically we are starting with the information that we have, which is the misstatement as well as the recorded value, the recorded value, those misstatements right here, the recorded value. So the first thing is we want to find the difference between each item and dollar amount as well as percentage. Let's take a look at 
misstatement number one, the item number one. So let's take a look at it. The first misstatement, we had the recorded value of 897. The audited value was 609. The factual misstatement, the difference was 288. Therefore, we, we, we overstated the value by 288. Now we find the percentage. The percentage is 0.32, which is we overstated this amount by 32%. Then we have misstatement two, which was $47. The audited value was zero. Simply put, we overstated by 47 and the error is 100% or one. And we have the third misstatement. You guys get the point. So first we find the dollar difference, which is the factual misstatement. Then we express this in a percentage. So this is the tainting percentage. Now what's going to happen is we're going to take those tainting, tainting percentage and we have to project them because remember what we did is sampling. Sampling means we did not look at everything. We did not look at everything. Now, before we even start the sampling process, we know that the confidence factor. Now, if you don't know what the confidence factor is, please look at the prior session. The confidence factor for this exercise is 2.31. Now, how did we come up with this confidence factor? I'm going to tell you how we came up with it. We assumed 10%. Ex uh, the risk of incorrect acceptance and we assume to to expect zero misstatement so this is how we came up with 2.31 let me show you here so we we said the risk of incorrect acceptance is 10 percent and we expected no misstatement therefore the confidence factor was 2.31 so this was computed in the prior session therefore what we say is even if we don't find any misstatement we expect to to have a to have issues, projected misstatement of 446,407. So even if we did not find any misstatement, we take the sampling interval, which we computed earlier, 193,250. This was called the sampling interval. And we we multiply this by 2.31. So let's assume we did not find any of this. Let's assume this did not exist. We would still say we could be wrong up to 446,407 because we sampled, but that's not true. We found three errors, one, two, three. Now we're going to take those errors and project them and, and, the sample, and add a sampling factor, then add the 446407. So how do we compute this tainting misstatement? Here's what's going to happen. The first thing is we're going to take those three tainting misstatement and we're going to organize them from the highest to the lowest. Simply put, from the highest to the lowest would look something like this. Basically, what we do is we say, one, two, three. The first, the, the largest one, obviously, is number two. Now, becomes number one. The second one is 32%. The third one is, the third one is 0 0.06. Now, we already computed the sampling interval. We, we put the sampling interval in, 133,250. Now, we have to project. Project means take the sampling interval and project, project the tainting, tainting percentage because we find a problem and the problem is 100%. So simply put, here's what's going to happen. We're going to take the sampling interval times one to project it to the population. 100, the projected population, the projected error is 193,250. And we'll do the same thing for the other two, the other two errors. We have to project it. Simply put, taking the sampling interval, multiplying it by a tainting percentage. But we don't stop there. If we if we added those three, it means we have two hundred sixty-seven and sixty-three dollars point two five. But what, when we started our problem, the, the, and this and the problem, we said that we expect to find zero misstatement. And the original problem it says we expect to find zero misstatement. We found one, two, three. Because when we started our confidence interval, we expect zero misstatement right here, but that's not true. We have one, two, three misstatement. Now here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna take our our errors, our projected misstatement, and even add an incremental change in the confidence factor because our confidence factor simply was incorrect. We thought it's 2.31 when we initially we thought 2.31 because we assumed zero misstatement we were pretty confident that their inventory is good now we find out three mistakes we have to change our 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 computation and for each error we have to find the incremental change incremental change it's what's the difference between 2.31 and the next level of finding one mistake 3.89 so let's look at this Oh, let's let let me pull a calculator. It's better if I pull a calculator so you can see the computation. Now I'm gonna take two um, three point three point eight nine minus two point three one, and the increase 
1.58. Now I'll do the same thing between the first and the second error because remember, I found three errors. Therefore, I have, have to keep on going. Now I find the difference between two and one, which is 5.33 confidence factor minus 3.89. I have to increase, I have to multiply my projection by 1.44 and I'll do the same thing for the third error, 6.69 minus 5.33. So simply put, overall my confidence is 6.6, .6, should have been 6.69. So I needed to increase my sample, but now I am adjusted for that. So I'm adjusting for that, 6.69 minus 5.33 and that's 1.36. 1 so I'm going to take those incremental increases in my confidence factor and multiply them by my projected misstatement so there we go so you know where these numbers are coming from now 1.58 1.44 1.36 those are the incremental the increases because i found more than one mistake now what i do is i project i compute my projected misstatement plus the allowance that i'm i'm sampling there's a risk if you're sampling there's a risk if you found one mistake it, it doesn't mean that's the only mistake. It's an indication that you might have more mistakes. So you have to find the, the incremental allowance risk. Therefore, I'm going to take my projected misstatement times the incremental factor. And that's going to be 305, 335. And I'll do the same thing for the other two mistakes. I take the projected misstatement, which is I take the projected misstatement times the incremental factor. Now, I, I can add them all up. Then I have to add to them, I have to add to them my precision, which was my original estimation is, even if I don't find anything, I'm gonna assume I have 446,407 because I, I, I'm sampling, but now I find out there's a problem, I have to add my projected misstatement plus the incremental. Therefore, I add those two. And when I add those two, I come up with 800 and 57,000. This is the upper misstatement bound. So this is the upper misstatement bound. Based on the upper misstated misstatement bound, I can make a decision. What is my decision? Remember, in my original problem, I said I can tolerate up to 575,000 of misstatement. Well, what I find out is this. When I, after I did all my computation, my upper misstatement bound is something in the 857,000, which is above 575. What do I do? I reject. I don't accept that the balance is fairly stated. Simply put, based on this calculation, the population is not acceptable. Why? Because the upper misstatement bound exceed the tolerable misstatement. So 857, 118 is greater than 575, which is my tolerable misstatement. I don't accept this population. I need to do more work. I don't accept their balance. Otherwise, I could have lived if this amount was lower than 575. So this is basically how this works. You could see this in a form of a simulation. You could, you could see this in a form of multiple choice or many form of multiple choice. You just, I mean, if I'm, I'm testing you about this, I can ask you, 15 to 20 different multiple choice questions on a data like this or I can this is an actual simulation or this could be an actual simulation where you have to select things and input things in an excel sheet if you have any questions by all means uh, let me know as always I would like to invite you to visit my website where I do what I teach you the material I don't I don't review it with you my job when I teach I teach to to college students and college students they need to learn the material so I suggest you check out my website farhatlectures.com and for one low subscription you can subscribe to all my courses whether it's accounting finance or CPA supplemental material study hard CPA is a long-term investment in your career good luck and stay safe especially if we are still living through this coronavirus good luck